Paying the price, 65 years worth. That's the fate tonight for a local gang leader. Bloods and Crips reacting to unexpected life sentences. You'd think after living life being a menace to society, getting put out of commission would not bother these thugs. But these bad guys will shock you with what they do when justice comes calling. Disclaimer. Number 1. Feudal Charles Charles is facing four charges, including racketeering. As the ringleader of the reputed Top 6 gang, Feudo led the group to become one of the most violent gangs in Palm Beach County's history. Police linked them to several robberies, 14 homicides, and more than 150 shootings in the past few years, including a shooting at a busy mall on Christmas Eve in 2006 that claimed the life of Berno Charlemagne, a rival gang member. But Feudo maintained that the Top 6 was just a rap group and not more. In 2007, the gang's activity peaked. There were shootings almost two to three times a week. Finally, in 2008, Fudo and 11 other high-ranking members were arrested and charged. Fudo cooperated with the authorities and said he would testify against his co-defendants. It wasn't Fudo's first time behind bars. He'd been arrested over a dozen times and already knew how to play his cards right. But this time, the judge wanted a sentence that sent a clear message to other gang members. The judge rejected two plea deals and the case went to trial. Tension in the courtroom reached an all-time high when a witness, Eguel Gaffrard, was murdered. Eguel was a member of the Top 6 gang. He was also a suspect in many crimes the gang was linked to. He took a plea deal to testify against Fudo, and that put a target right on his back. The defense team immediately requested a mistrial, but the judge overruled it. Security was beefed up at the trial, and the jurors had armed guards escorting them to and from the courthouse to undisclosed locations. After after less than an hour of deliberation, the jury returned a guilty verdict. Fudo, who did not testify in his defense during the trial, showed little reaction to the verdict. It wasn't until his mother and his sisters gave emotional pleas for the judge to hand Fudo a lighter sentence that he dropped his head to the table. I'm 64 years old. If Fudo goes to jail, I will never see His mother said Fudo hadn't been okay since he got burned as a kid and pleaded for leniency. Prosecutors argued that Fudo had been given many chances. They wanted the maximum. The judge had between six and a half years and 66 years to choose from. Without a single comment, she sentenced him to 65 years. Fudo will be 95 before he sets foot out of jail. Fudo Charles showed no remorse till his mom showed up. Unlike him, Tariq Jackson didn't need his mummy to stun the court at his sentencing. Number two, Tariq Jackson. Tariq is charged with one count of open murder, armed robbery, four weapons charges, and 12 counts of perjury. The block party on July 12, 2015 in the small college town of Ypsilanti started like any other. Just after midnight, police received a 911 call about a shooting in the area. They found 20-year-old Keandre Duff lying on the pavement. He had suffered a shot to the back of the head. An ambulance rushed him to the hospital, but he didn't survive. Investigation into the shooting led them to 18-year-old Tariq Jackson, a member of the rival gang, and he was arrested and charged with the murder. A month before the case went to trial, Tariq pleaded guilty to all charges against him, including second-degree murder. In an emotionally charged courtroom, Keandre's mother tearfully recounted receiving the news that her son had been killed. Our whole world was turned upside down from that point. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because that when, the, when our children make these decisions out here, they don't understand how it affects everybody. She addressed Tariq directly, telling him she'd forgiven him and prayed for Tariq's mother. Mom, where's mom? Is mom in here? Is Tariq's mother in here? Mom, come here. If it's okay with you, I'll go there. She'll pass If you know it, this is the time for you to speak to me. Okay, okay. Well, I just want to say, I appreciate the gesture. I'll speak to you, but I'll speak to mom as well to let mom know. Your son. It's still gonna be a great man. All he has to do is give it to the Lord. Both women embraced after the statement. When he got a chance to speak, Tariq gave an earnest apology to Keandre's family and took responsibility for his actions. He also had some advice for gang members. Everybody around my age and other people that I be with, you know, the life that we was living, being in gangs and all that other stuff, it ain't worth 16 years or death, because eventually you put in a situation 
and there's severe consequences that come with that. The judge sentenced Tariq to 17 to 40 years in prison. If Tariq Jackson going from gangbanger to philosopher surprised you, what Eric Holden did after killing his friend in cold blood was just criminal. Number three. Eric Holder Jr. Eric is charged with one count of murder and two counts each of attempted murder and assault with a firearm. He'd gone from rapper to starting his record label, opening a clothing store in the Hyde Park neighborhood of South Los Angeles, and becoming a community activist, funding schools, communal workspaces, and speaking against gun violence. But his ties to the gang remained. On March 31st, 2019, what started as friendly advice ended in the worst imaginable way for Nipsey. He'd come to his LA clothing store and ran into Eric Holder, a fellow Rolling 60s gang member. Nipsey told his old friend that he'd heard a rumor that Eric had snitched to police and urged him to clear it up with the gang before things escalated. Eric left and it seemed all was well. Then, 10 minutes later, he returned with two handguns and shouted, you're through! And he opened fire at Nipsey, hitting him at least 10 times. His bullets also hit two bystanders. Then he rushed to Nipsey's body and kicked him in the head. While the bystanders survived the shooting, Nipsey did not. Eric pleaded not guilty to the charges against him. Undoubtedly, he had pulled the trigger, but he was adamant that it was not premeditated. The high-profile trial went underway in 2022. The defense was not arguing that Eric had not pulled the trigger. They said it wasn't premeditated and had occurred in the heat of passion, a second-degree charge at best. Prosecutors struggled with getting witnesses to take the stand. Even the bystanders caught in the gunfire refused to snitch during cross-examination. But the jury sided with the prosecution, and on July 6, 2022, Eric was found guilty of all the charges against him. As a member of the Crenshaw community for over 30 years and a stakeholder, uh, someone who knew Nipsey Hussle, I'm here to say that his murder has had a devastating and tremendous impact still to this day on our community. He was a philanthropist, an entrepreneur, business person, mentor, role model. He was a hero to many young people in the Crenshaw area, but also throughout the nation. Our community right now, we lost everything. Everything we worked for, one person took that person to our community. Thousands of jobs we don't have no more. Homies don't have nothing to do. They backslide. They robbing people now. We had stuff to do. Now they don't have nothing to do. All our stores are closed down. All the, we were relying on jobs. The whole community relied on them. Wearing an orange jumpsuit, he stared straight ahead and did not react as the judge announced his lengthy sentence, 60 years to life. Eric Holden murdered his friend in cold blood and didn't shed a tear. Yet what he did in court was a lot better than what Lydell Sparks got up to. Number four, Lydell Sparks. Lydell faces five charges, including aggravated assault, armed robbery, and murder. Like many people, Travis Henry was looking for love, and he thought he'd found it online with a woman he'd met online. They They'd spent two months talking online, and finally, the 22-year-old was ready to take their romance to the next level. On June 22, 2020, Travis set out in his BMW, driving from Montgomery, Alabama to Columbus, Georgia to meet her. Travis didn't know he was headed into a trap. At 7 a.m., Columbus police found Travis' body in the street. He died from a gunshot wound to the chest. Travis' family was shocked to find out that the woman Travis had come to see, Teriona Horton, was involved with his murder. A lot of information wasn't released, um, but we do know that they are on the right track. They got who did this, and I just pray that she gets the maximum penalty. Within two months, all four were charged with the robbery. 19-year-old Lydell Sparks was a member of the Gangster Disciples and has been tagged as the shooter in the murder. Lydell was quickly found guilty in a Columbus courtroom and escorted out. But it was what happened at his sentencing that shocked everyone. Even though Lydell was just 19 when he committed the murder, he was no stranger to the Muskogee County Jail. Over the past two years, he's racked up eight mugshots and several charges. His last sentence was a jail stabbing. He was a juvenile at the time, so he got off lightly, a year behind bars. This time, he was tried as an adult. At Lydell's pre-sentencing hearing, the prosecution didn't even need to make a demand because the defense attorney did all that by himself and asked that Lydell be given a life sentence without parole. 
The judge had no choice but to agree with him. Lydell got his chance to speak and flew into a tirade. He criticized his lawyer's performance as well as the actions of the judge and the district attorney. He pointed angry fingers at the witnesses who had testified, calling them all liars. Then he went off over Travis' family, crying during the trial, but they weren't crying now. Some laughed while others left. These people, these people don't hear this man the hearing ended when the judge decided to move to the next hearing. Lydell Sparks threw a tantrum that any toddler would be jealous of, but wait till you see tough guy Justin Jarman turn into a slobbering mess when he gets his day in court. Last but not least, we have Justin Jarman. Justin is charged with four counts of attempted murder and participating in criminal gang activity. On January 3rd, 2016, a 73-year-old man was seated on a bench at the train station when a juvenile came up to him and demanded money. When the man refused, the teenager grabbed him by the neck and threw him to the ground. As the elderly man shouted in pain, he rifled through the man's pockets for money and walked away. Surveillance footage captured the suspect and police identified him as 18-year-old Justin Jarman, a member of the Detroit Taking Over gang. He and two other gang members were also linked to a drive-by shooting. In October 2016, the three had been driving around in a stolen sedan on Dudley Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, when they spotted a member of the Denison Boys gang, a rival group, on the opposite side of the street. Ten minutes earlier, their target had just stolen a purse from a woman down the road and stopped at a neighbor's house boasting about his spoils. At that moment, the neighbor noticed a black car pulled up in front of the house. The back driver's side window began to roll down and the sound of gunfire erupted. The woman ran into the house and heard the car zoom off. Then she saw two of her kids in the house had been seriously hurt in the shooting. They were transported to the hospital for treatment. Justin was arrested and charged. In November 2017, Justin pleaded guilty to all charges. At his sentencing hearing, the mother of the two girls recounted the painful memories of that night and the trauma. She pleaded with the judge for a life sentence. When it was Justin's turn to speak, all the bravado of the young thug had left him. He stood before the judge, remorseful and fidgeting. I caused pain on the community and their loved ones. And I hurt two little girls, so I deserve to be punished and apologized while fighting back tears. But while his remorse seemed sincere, the facts of the case and Justin's violent history could not be ignored. The judge sentenced him to 45 years behind bars.